Hello, my name's Nunny, and you're watching Underground Heroes. Hello, my name is uh, Gillian Bowie. That's B O U G H E Y. It's pronounced like David Bowie, who's my brother, but not the famous David Bowie. Anyway, I'm a singer songwriter living just outside uh, Paris. How long have you been making music and what got you started? I was born in the northwest in a small village that nobody really knows between Manchester and Liverpool. It was actually a great place growing up because the music scene was so strong and obviously the two big cities provided just like the best concerts and stuff even though I was pretty young then but I managed to go because I was crafty and um, music whether it was in concerts performing in at school or um, dancing in discos and nightclubs was like really part of my adolescence. Like I say, even at school I was in like every school performance, particularly when it had music in it. I loved singing. Uh, didn't play an instrument actually because I was only allowed to do one like hobby outside school and I did dance. I did a lot of theatre at school, etc. However, by the time I'd moved to, I'd left England and moved to Paris, um, in 1992, I formed a, a trio that mixed music and theatre, more specifically singing and theatre, an a cappella trio. Um, we sang uh, covers in French and in English, but covers that we completely adapted with a pretty difficult three-part vocal harmonies that was really good for my singing. We toured a lot inside France, Germany, Switzerland. But I was a little bit frustrated because in creative terms, there was no writing and I love writing so much um, that by 93, 94, I'd already uh, written quite a few tunes, very simple tunes and um, a ton of lyrics and happened to be friendly with a, a film director who heard a little bit of what I'd done. He asked me to write uh, a song for his first TV film, and I did so. And from then on, um, I've provided quite a few songs for TV films and TV series in France, um, songs that I've always collaborated on because I'm not a musician. So it really depends on the style. I've collaborated with various different people in this country um, who are good at different styles, whether it be hip hop, pop, electro, rock, folk. Yeah, so it all goes back to the um, early 90s, I'd say. What's your latest release called? Tell us a little something about the track. Okay, so it's evening now. I want to introduce my latest release. It came out yesterday on YouTube. It's called Not Mad Enough. It's an upbeat, total pop love song, very commercial, not really the kind of thing I normally write, but I was commissioned to write it for like a teeny bopper film. And in fact, I took great pleasure in writing it because it was fun. It was easy to sing, it was joyful to sing. And I found it quite easy actually to put the song together because I wasn't trying to prove anything. It was just total fun. And uh, the whole idea is not mad enough. It's not when you're not kind of, you don't feel quite daring enough to say all the things you'd like to say to somebody, particularly when you first get to know them and realize you've kind of fallen in love with them. So it's kind of love song. Who's the last artist you just listened to? The last artist, literally, I listened to is someone I, I've never ever listened to in my life before so it isn't necessarily representative of what I listen to um, I think he's been going for about the last 10 or 15 years half man half biscuit obviously I'd always well since he's been writing music I'd always heard of him but I'd never actually sat down and listened to anything and my brother um, David Bowie who puts together these incredible uh, compilations of music and sends them to me a really eclectic mixes of every kind of music, which I love because you never know what's coming next. Can you tell me an interesting fact about you? 
something that we probably wouldn't know. Um, I don't know if it's interesting, but um, when I was 15 I saw The Clash. I think that's really good, one of my strong like, musical souvenirs, memories. And um, about the same age I was expelled from school because I had blue hair. Is that interesting in it? <laughs> I forgot to say in the first little snippet I did that I work in fashion and music is a, a sideline, an important one. And the, the two for me go together quite well because they're both forms of self-expression and they are both, um, they, they both enable me in any case to express myself in many different ways. I'm a multifaceted person like I think most of us are and the different styles I dress in on different days and the different kinds of music I listen to and like to make represent different parts of me. I find it really weird when people say they only like a certain type of music. Anyway, that is foreign to me. I love so much stuff I wouldn't even be able to start giving you a list. What are your plans musically for 2021? First of all, I'm going to finish my charity series. I decided to do 12 songs in that series and then collect money for the kids. Um, so I've got two more songs to go. Then I want to go back into the studio as soon as the COVID situation allows it. There's quite a few songs I've written words for, I've got tunes for, but I need to have them arranged by some musicians. And I think I'm probably going to go to a studio uh, in the suburbs of Paris, not far from where I live, um, run by a really good drummer. I fancy doing some stuff, um, voice and drums, so we'll see how that goes, first of all. And then I'd be very keen on collaborating with some people I've met on Twitter. I don't know whether that would work out and how it would go, you know, working at a distance, but met some nice people there and different musical styles, so why not? I'm open to different things, of course. What's inspired you to do music? It's a little bit like um, getting dressed. It's, I find words, music, clothing, such incredible forms of self-expression. And no matter what that expression is, uh, sadness, anger, joy, indifference. And with a simple tune sometimes and some words. You can evoke so many different situations, ambiences. I love the whole storytelling, actually, of songs, and probably my favourite songs tell stories either directly or indirectly. Um, I also like the fact that writing words requires, okay, some imagination and stuff, but you can do it anywhere uh, with pen and paper. You know, I often write lyrics really early morning when I'm having my coffee in bed or it can be late at night, or it can be when I'm traveling on a train. Um, it's the whole, yeah, it's the whole form of self-expression and music probably more than any other form of expression brings out so many um, emotions, you know. Uh, there's music that makes you want to get up and dance, there's music that makes you want to cry, there's music that makes you think, makes you reflective, contemplate life. Um, yeah, music evokes so, so much. Where can people find your music? YouTube. It's on Spotify also. Um, but it's important for me to put it on YouTube because um, it's part of my charity series for neglected kids. So it's really important for me. So uh, I hope lots of people will listen. Not for me, but for the kids. Okay, dream gig. What two artists or bands, dead or alive, would you perform with? And where would that gig be? That was a really, I think this is the hardest question because there are so, so many. So first of all, one who's dead. Someone I had, had a lot of admiration for, for his energy and also for being what I consider to be probably a good person. Uh, that's Joe Strummer for his authenticity um, and his energy on stage. I, like I said, I saw The Clash a few times and um, he was just uh, incredible on stage and I would like to do something live with him in a big open air kind of space, open air festival or something like that and just move on down and, and rock and be happy and give it tons of oomph and energy. Then, uh, very different, 
for a female um, performer um, in a much smaller space, uh, an indoor space at night, like a late night bar or club, either in New York or Paris, um, with someone like Patti Smith, uh, again for her energy and her poetry, or someone that isn't much spoken about who I think has immense talent and uh, I love the way she composes and the way she sings too is someone like Fiona Apple. Um, I think I could probably do a decent um, duet with Fiona Apple. And of course then there's songwriting collaborations. I'd love to co-write a song with Neil Hannan. He's very lyric and bass like I am. Obviously much more famous than me, but whatever. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd love to co-write a song with Damon Albarn actually and perform with him, come to think of it. And that would probably be in London. Thanks for an interview. Is there anybody you want to give a shout out to? I would, uh, just generally, to, to all the people I've met and who have been very encouraging on Twitter. Obviously, I don't know any of them personally, but there are a handful of people who have listened to my stuff, encouraged me, sent me their stuff. Um, I thought it would be, you know, a bit impersonal when my brother-in-law, who is on Twitter, encouraged me to, to put my songs on Twitter. I was a bit dubious. But in fact, I've been amazed at how friendly people have been, or well, certainly the people I've been in touch with, and encouraging. And so, yeah, I would say my 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 bunch of Twitter friends who are virtual. But um, and maybe I'll give a shout out to my brother-in-law. He's a great guy. He's called Michael Bowie, Mike Jones, with with his name before he married my sister. And you will know him on Twitter, perhaps for the. Um, Coke, Coke Town Boilers. Uh, his songs are kind of quite political. I've been um, pretty impressed by the solidarity um, and community spirit on Twitter, and it encourages me to to keep going because I think people will will listen and you know lend you a helping hand if they can, even if it's just in terms of a few words of advice. Goodbye, everybody.